in the great land of India. There lived two Hindu merchants. They were not particularly spiritual nor religious, although they did attend the temples during the times of the festivals. But they learned that a great yogi saint was to come to their city to give a discourse. And they were curious. So they went along to hear what the saint had to say. And during the course of his discourse, the great saint said that if mankind could abstain from lying, from thinking negative thoughts, getting angry with others, that nectar would rise from the base chakra through the Saraswati Nadi to the tongue. And if one could practice this even for two weeks during the phase of the new moon and then fast for three days before the full moon and on the night of the full moon spend the night chanting a wish that the goddess Saraswati would visit to make that wish come true. So after the discourse, when the merchants were returning to their homes, one merchant said to the other, did you, did you listen to, did you remember the disciplines that the yogi told us? And the other merchant said, Oh, don't tell me that you believe that kind of stuff. No, there's no such thing as miracles. And the first merchant said, Well, even if you don't believe, at least you can accompany me when I go through the practices and the disciplines. So, this merchant, for the two weeks of the new moon, he abstained from lying, only telling truth, not having negative thoughts, not getting angry with anyone. And then, for three days, he fasted. And then, on the night of the full moon, his friend came over to accompany him. And the one merchant sat there through the night with a brick in front of him. And he chanted and chanted, turn this brick into gold, turn this brick into gold, turn this brick into gold. And the night went on and it was coming to the dawn. And at this time, he got angry. Nothing was happening. So he said, if you're not going to turn into gold, then become ashes. <laughs> and before his very eyes, the brick disintegrated into ash. Well, the merchant said, Oh, Goddess Saraswati, what have I done? What have I done? And in despair, he put his head on the floor. But his friend jumped up and said, Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You have revealed to me a great truth. Now the question that's asked of 
do you? What do you consider? What rises up for you as the truth that was revealed to the second merchant? We've been looking at our life. And perhaps you'll be already becoming aware that in the process of bringing these facets of our life together, seeing the pattern that forms is somewhat like allowing the nectar to pass up the Saraswati Nadi to our lips, to be able to express our life without judgment, as is obvious from witnessing what's been occurring here. Without judgment, putting together the story of our life and the stages of our life in a state of truth. Isn't it so? All of you. It's been witnessed. It's very clear. And you would not be able to do so had you not already done your homework, so to speak, to deal with the demons, to deal with the bogies, to deal with the emotions, and now to be able to sit and put down, express through the tongue, the life. But when we look at it in relation to this story, what is that truth that's revealed to the merchant? If we can allow an understanding of the meaning of this story rise to our lips to have expression, we have a glimmer of what it is that's going to occur when we complete the story of our life. very well, the habit, the practice is to be abstruse. Not obtuse, abstruse. There's a difference in those words. I have to get out of the door. <coughs> abstruse. What does it mean? Not enigmatic, like the stories that have been told, but abstruse. But there's no subtlety here. It's not a subtlety. But you can't say it's being abstruse. But that's for a purpose, isn't it? Because otherwise it would be speaking to the mind and the mind would catch it. So to find the answers to these stories, it has to be from somewhere else. Isn't it so? Not the mind. So the question's asked of you again. What is the truth that was revealed to this merchant by the little act that took place of his friend going through the motions of doing what the yogi said to have his wish turn into ashes?